Welcome to today's episode of the Chem OG. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's very, very important to all aspects of chemistry, and that is the concept of stability and how it relates to reactivity. So to talk about stability, we first have to figure out what it is. So in terms of what it is, stability is all about things that really don't change all that much. Think about somebody who is at a stable job. Now, it doesn't mean that that's some that person is very, very content with the job. He or she may be, you know, performing a particular task. They're not really that happy with it. But if the job is stable, that means that two weeks from now, that job will still be there. Chances are a couple of years from now, that job will still be there. So stability isn't necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It's a thing. If things are stable, it means that they don't really change that much. If somebody had a stable home life, that means they probably didn't move around every single year. They probably stayed put in the same place. Were they happy? Mm, could be, could be that they weren't. But the idea is that things that are stable are things that don't really change that much. And so what about reactivity as a concept in chemistry? We see reactions all the time. We see reaction arrows, things happening, spontaneous, non-spontaneous reactions. But really when we talk about the word reaction, it means something very specific. And that specific thing is change. So if a reaction is happening, I can guarantee you that the left side of the reaction and the right side of the reaction are gonna look different from each other. If there's no reaction, though, then the left side of the arrow and the right side of the arrow are going to be the same thing. And you never, ever see that, right? Anytime you have a reaction going, there's always some sort of change that happen from reactants to products. Even if it's something as simple as a phase change, or even if it's something as dramatic as bonds getting split up all over the place and getting reformed in all kinds of different orientations. But the word reaction means that we are looking at a particular change. And so... If stable things don't change that much and reactivity indicates change, what is the relationship between stability and reactivity? Do, 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 do. That's right. That means that they are inversely related. And that relationship is something that is very, very important to us in terms of understanding very, very advanced topics in chemistry. And so stability and reactivity are inversely related. Awesome. Here's another sort of topic that dovetails into stability and reactivity. You may not think that it does, but it certainly does, and that is energy. So when we talk about energy, there are going to be other lessons in which we talk about types of energy, but you know, to kind of list them off, there's kinetic energy, which is energy due to uh, motion. There's potential energy, which is energy due to position. There's thermal energy, which means that we're talking about heat of some sort and heat going in and heat coming out and things like that. But when we talk about energy, at least from a topical perspective, things that have lots of energy or high energy things are unpredictable. Think about it, right? Like if you have a friend who has tons and tons of energy, that means at any point he or she could be going off and doing any sort of activity, right? That's like that, wow, that person has so much energy. One moment they're investing in, you know, a particular, you know, startup or another moment they're, you know, they picked up another two or three extra hobbies or another moment, you know, they thought about learning, you know, four or five different languages. So if somebody has all this energy, that means you really don't know what they're going to do. And if so, if something has a lot of energy and it has a lot of different ways in which it can use that energy, that means that, well, means that there's a lot of change that that person can undergo, right? And if you think of the opposite, if something is low energy, well, if somebody's got a low energy personality, they're actually pretty predictable. You know exactly what they're going to do, and they're not going to change that much. So if we're making, right, sort of these relationships between energy, high energy things and how they readily change, what was the uh, word that we used to indicate change that we talked about a moment ago? Well, that word that we used was reactivity. And so that means if we're kind of tying all three things together, we're looking at stability, having an inverse relationship to energy. And we already discussed how stability is inversely related to reactivity. And so you'll notice that energy and reactivity are kind of going in the same direction and that direction is opposite from where stability is going. So that's a good way to remember that 
you know, the relationship among these three variables, stability, energy, and reactivity. Energy and reactivity are going in the same direction. Things that are high energy, they're highly reactive, they're highly unpredictable, which is the opposite of stability instead. Okay, so those are three key terms. And if you're able to understand the relationship among all three, that certainly helps you make a lot of predictions about certain chemical phenomena. And it also helps you on things like standardized exams that rely on your uh, ability to be able to understand these fundamentals. All right, so another particular term that's related to energy, instability, and reactivity is something that's not talked about so much in a lot of chemistry classes. Many times your chemistry professors are kind of relying on your previous instructor to tell you this stuff, right? And so yeah, this kind of information gets lost in the shuffle. I want to make sure you understand it. And that is this concept of strength. So when we talk about something or someone who is strong, Stronger things are things with higher ability levels. Like if you say that somebody's really, really strong in a particular subject area, that means that that person, he or she, has a high ability level in that particular subject area. If we're talking about a strong athlete, we're talking about an athlete who you know, can perform to a, a much higher ability level than his or her peers. So when we say that something is strong, it means it's really, really good at what it does. So strong reactants are good at what they do. And so strong reactants are good at what they do. Well, what are reactants supposed to do? Well, reactants are supposed to react. And that means that they are supposed to change. So things that are strong reactants are actually rather reactive. And if they are reactive, we have already established that they're really, really unstable. And so whenever you notice things like, you know, in chemistry, we talk about things like a strong acid or a strong nucleophile. Well, that's just another word for saying that we're looking at something that's reactive or unstable. So if we're relating all four of those concepts together, we just stated that stability and strength are inverses of each other. So that means stability kind of stands alone here, whereas strength, energy and reactivity each of these three goes in the same direction and stability is the only one that's going in the opposite direction from the other three. So that's a good way, again, to remember how it is that these four concepts relate to each other. Strength, energy, reactivity all go in the same direction. Stability is the outlier. It's the one that's going in a direction that's different from the other three. So if we're looking to summarize the information that we just mentioned, right? We use a lot of different words in chemistry to describe the behavior of molecules. And stability is the one that goes in the opposite direction from reactivity, energy, and strength. And if you're wondering how it is that we're gonna use these fundamentals in order to be able to understand other concepts in the chemistry realm, um, there are certainly factors that can affect the stability of our molecule. And a good way to remember what these different factors are that may affect the stability of our molecule is to remember this mnemonic, and that is RAYS. So this particular initialism, if you take a look at the first, um, or if you take a look at each of those letters, each of those letters represents the, the, the first letter of particular, th of particular factors that can affect the stability of our molecules. So R stands for resonance, which is very, very familiar to us in terms of chemistry. Aromaticity is another thing that can affect the stability of our molecule. Induction is a chemical phenomenon that we can talk about in context. The size of our atom or molecule is going to affect its stability. And then lastly, something that um, you know is very familiar in terms of chemistry, and that is electronegativity. So we'll talk about each of these particular uh, factors that can affect the stability of our molecule separately in separate modules. So certainly take a look at those videos um, and uh, make sure to uh, to hit those up and, and comment and subscribe as necessary. And so wanna make sure that you guys are keeping on learning. Hopefully today's lesson was a useful one for you and um, you're very welcome. See you at the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.